it is time for our last stop and jot for module three. Don't forget to grab your handout. Our last stop and jot pointed out the key concepts related to the connection between assessment and instruction, with a point of emphasis on the four stages of the assessment instruction cycle. Assess, evaluate, plan, and teach. Now we recap this connection in light of a support model that uses ongoing data to continuously assess student needs so we can provide the most appropriate instruction wherever they land in the support system. The three-tiered support model is a framework for providing varied levels of support to meet students' instructional needs as determined through assessment. This model is often represented as a pyramid with three divisions or tiers of support. The base representing tier one or the regular core instruction that occurs in the classroom. Tier two representing the population who have been identified as performing slightly below grade level expectations and therefore need a bit more targeted support in addition to their regular Tier 1 instruction. Tier 3 is the top of the pyramid and represents the student population considered to be at high risk of experiencing literacy difficulties and requires more intense targeted support than Tier 2. The goal of tiered support is to better meet each student's instructional needs and assessment data plays a big role in identifying areas of deficiency and determining the level of support needed for each student. There are generally five assessment tools used within a tiered support model for these purposes. A universal screener is used usually at the beginning of the school year to identify students who might need extra support. Diagnostic assessment generally follows screening and is used to zone in on specific knowledge and skill areas of need. Progress monitoring tools are then used for regular periodic checks of progress throughout the intervention to be sure the right skills and knowledge are being addressed for each child. Benchmark assessment occurs two to three times a year as key mile markers throughout the year to determine needed changes in the support provided. And then the final assessment tool is the end of year assessment that provides a summary of student growth relative to grade level expectations. The last lesson in this module helped us make assessment connections across key areas. The first being the discussion of the what, why, when, and how of data collection within each literacy component area, oral language, phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and writing. The big idea being that if there are focused areas of instruction, then there must also be focused areas of assessment as assessment guides our instruction. We also discussed that in addition to the basic areas of literacy, there are other factors that contribute to students' academic success and that we are responsible for developing these skills as well. We started with metacognition, the process of thinking about one's own thoughts. We have to teach kids to think for themselves. We have to refrain from jumping in too quickly to solve their problems. When they respond to a question, we should constantly follow their response with statements such as, tell me more about that, what made you say or do that, or what might you do now? We teach them to be readers, writers, and thinkers. The next influencing factor we discussed was motivation and engagement. We know that if students are interested in something, they work harder to figure it out, and being actively engaged in something fosters motivation. Learning is an active process, and not just mentally. Young kids need to be physically engaged in the learning. Learning is an active sport. And our last other factor to consider was self-efficacy, which relates to whether or not our students believe in themselves. Students who struggle need even more support from us in building their self-confidence, self-importance, and feeling that they are an important part of our learning community. Our last big connection for assessment was to the science of reading and the fact that key models, such as the simple view of reading and Scarborough's reading rope, help us to narrow the focus of instruction and consequently helps us narrow the focus of assessment. One last big takeaway. Assessment that guides the support we provide to students is critical to helping all students develop to their highest potential, but this must be done within an environment that ensures all students feel they are part of our safe learning community. This wraps up our last stop and jot for Module 3. How can the big ideas we have covered relate to your classroom planning and instruction?